to Gunnell Weiss Camp's web development. Uh, today we're doing lesson seven uh, and we'll be doing calling a web API <coughs> via MVC and getting our response. Uh, so in today's lesson we'll, we, we will purely use MVC to call an external web API, get a response from it and return that response to the initial MVC calling function. So in, in other words, no jQuery used in this one, no um, Angular, uh, purely server-side code, so, so C-sharp C code in this example. <coughs> um, okay. So if you want to create the initial part of this project, um, just go here in A, so go to File, New, Project, and then here in B, make sure these items are selected. <coughs> uh, then, then make sure you select the items here in C. So you've got empty and MVC selected there as well. So we're doing the MVC part first of this project. Because basically we're doing two parts, an MVC part and the web API part, obviously. Okay, so <coughs> uh, let's go and dive into our code. So here we have our empty MVC application. Uh, so first step, what we want to do is add a new controller. <coughs> Just add in. We're going to call it the traditional home controller, <coughs> and then we're going to grab some code for that. here. <clears throat> I'll just uh, migrate all the code first and then we'll discuss the code um, once it's all there. <clears throat> right, so we've got that guy in. We're going to have to add some references as well but first let's add a, <coughs> a, models, fo a models folder. So just a class there. We're going to call it user model. Save it all. There we go. And now we'll bring in our models folder. What am I doing? Sorry, I have model four, which is in our solution, obviously. So this guy is connected to this guy here in our management. <coughs> and then we want to bring in the models folder, which we've just done, which uh, has brought in this attribute here. But sorry, we'll discuss code once we sort of get things going a little bit. Uh, we do need to add a reference in here for this guy. So let's do that quickly. system.net.http is the one you want. Add that in. Yeah, so this system.net.http is the namespace for the web requ request library. But we still have to obviously bring it into our code page. Coming up. 
there now so you can click on right click on that and you go to system.net so that's brought it in that sense <coughs> so we didn't actually need this namespace not the HTTP anyway so it was just the system.net um, okay anyway we've got this namespace in here now <coughs> so now let's quickly build everything uh, in the next step we're going to add our view <coughs> Okay, so the build is starting. Let me just hide him. Uh, yeah, so we just need to add our view, and then I think we're more or less done in our MVC area. <coughs> so that's all done. Let's go and add view. Doesn't really matter what we select here, just make sure this, these aren't uh, selected, but we're going to uh, copy and paste some code in here as well to make things a bit quicker and easier. So while that's doing that, <coughs> let's grab our code from here. There we go, right eh? <coughs> uh, Let's just uh, bring in the correct namespace, which is MBC Client. Oops. Let's have a look in our models folder. What namespace have we got here? <coughs> ah, yeah, so that's right. We can see our model here has now come into play for our view to use here, uh, obviously. Uh, so it's the only, in this, we get this attribute here from this namespace here, um, the overall. Uh, project library. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's all our MVC part of the application done. <clears throat> now we actually need to add the web API. So go to the solution up here, right click on that, add new project, and we're going to get the same, uh, same folder here. Let's call this actually the Web API. Okay. Now we want empty, but obviously we want you want this web API item selected. So empty and web API selected. Uh, then click OK. <coughs> so in in essentially we'll have two projects within this one solution. One is the MVC client, and one is the actual web API here. And the client obviously calls the web API. Uh, the web API created here if you're if you don't want MVC the folder structure is quite similar uh, as in you'll have your controllers and models here as well. Uh, so first thing we're going to do here now is add a new controller Come on. <coughs> uh, and make sure you select, see this is where you can get a little bit tricked up. This is a Web API 2 controller. It's a Web API controller, not the normal MVC controller. Um, so make sure you select a Web API controller. <coughs> Excuse me, we're going to call this user data. This has to be the same as my 
demo example, so the naming conventions have to be the same. By that I mean we're going to call it, this is my web API for my demo application, it has to be the same naming convention here which is user data controller. So just making sure of that. <coughs> and we will then obviously grab the code for that guy, which is over here. And after we've added the control, it's going to add a models folder. And we'll be close to putting in all the code. Um, as we can see, our user model is in here. This is the one we've got to add in now, which is right here. Use a model, we'll call it, because obviously that's the same as there. Let's grab the code for that. Well, that's uh, doing its magic, which is from here. <coughs> right. Okay, so he, that guy's in there. Let's bring the namespace in for it. models and again if you're confused where that's coming from try to ch try to check out my C sharp tutorials as well but this is coming from this guy here and which in turn comes from this guy here which in turn references that guy <coughs> which means now we can use this piece of code block or class which is created in here but let's not get too let's, let's not get too bogged down the code right now um, now there's uh, two important elements left where we have to manipulate the code in the process overall. We need to, so this client will call this web API. To do that, it, the client needs to know where the web API is obviously. And so we need to grab this little number here or the domain of the web API, which is here. We can find that out by right clicking Go to properties uh, in the web folder, and here's our number. This would obviously be just be you, you. You would replace this with the domain once you upload it into the real environment, obviously. But this little magic number has to go in here. <coughs> uh, and now the last sort of item we have to do is we have to right click on here properties both projects have to start up and be running at the same time so yeah w once you're finished with the whole process you've got to upload the web API and the client um, so they're both there and running at the same time and to make this process run in a demonstration or so it works you have to also make sure that both projects are running at the same time. So in other words, here we've got this guy here and this guy here, and when we um, start up the project, they will both run at the same time. So <coughs> we just press apply for that, <coughs> and then OK. Right, OK, so that's all our code and all the magic we have to do. Um, so yeah, let's talk briefly about the code. I think that's important. Um, so here we've got our normal uh, MVC get action, and we're calling the view by this long name that I called it. It's not a very good name for that, uh, but anyway, uh, it is descriptive. So here is where most of our uh, magic code will happen. Once we click in our view, um, enter, so sorry, in our view, we've got, what we, what we will be doing is we've got a username, and for that username, you want to get the password. Uh, and there's a text box in here. Uh, edit for username. So you'll be, sorry. <clears throat> so in this view, you're going to have a username, uh, which you can enter. 
So once, and then you enter the username, you'll, you'll press the submit button here. And by pressing the submit button, it will get the password of that username. That username is then gotten in the web API area and is returned here in this view bag password. <coughs> so, so going back in the C sharp code, we press our enter button. We build our uh, URL for our web API, which is here. Uh, we're calling, so, so you can understand, I might have done something a little bit naughty. No, 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 that's fine. Uh, that's fine. You don't have to build an API folder in there. Um, so this will call this controller here, user data controller, and it will call that function within the user data controller, which is check user. So let's make sure that uh, so call that check user there, and as we can see, uh, this check user gets two parameters: username and user password. Maybe it might help if I explain these. Oops. Side by side. Oh, okay. Yeah, this might help people. Um, so we're <coughs> passing in the username and the password here. Into the API function here, so this is the API function here. Check user. Um, <clears throat> that's the URL. We haven't actually. This is only the string. We haven't actually passed it here. What we need to do is we have, have to create a web request, and then in that web request, we then pass. We call the create. We pass that URL in there. Uh, then we wait for response. So at this stage in here, it does come across over here, uh, and in here, all we're doing is we created a list object with um, a, a password which will be connected to a word that you, a, a username that you put in. So if we enter Fred, this password will come back. <coughs> uh, so all we're doing here is looking, we've got some um, link down here, and all we're going to do is check in this link object for the username that was passed in. Um, so if, again, Fred was passed in here, we're looking in this uh, list object here for Fred, and that will be recorded in the result object here, and then obviously that my password Fred will be passed back using the JSON response back here um, by going to the results and the actual user password here. <coughs> um, so that then comes back into here in our home controller <coughs> and gets put, we use the read line process here to put the result back into this string result object and this then in turn uh, ends up in that view bag password um, that we saw in our view here which is down here okay so obviously the user models they're the same in our client and our web api so this is this is um, because each one needs to uh, manipulate and move around the same sort of model information. <coughs> um, so I think that was sort of covered all the areas. So yeah, we've, we've already talked about the web API area. Um, yeah, so I, just going back a little bit into the view, we did sort of talk about it. It's just a normal post back. Um, but again, we're just passing in the username for that post back. <coughs> um, so that really, this, that's the discussion of the code. Now, if we start it, <coughs> and we bring this up here, the view that might be useful is this one here. So if we got this here, let's just make this a little bit smaller let's make this there let's bring that down so now if we so you can see for a start here we've got two processes running this is the web api and this is the mvc app see both processes need to be running if this is not running it will not work <coughs> so now if we uh, type in here fred we'll get um the username of my password Fred back. 
at least I hope so. Let's give that a whirl. See now, once we click this button, it'll come into here, and then it'll go into the Web API. Web API will re return the result, and then we'll return that view that we saw. So, get password. Taking a little bit, taking a while. Computer's going in super speed. Come on, PC. Slowly but surely. Come on, Fred, get the password. Just make sure nothing's blocking it. Ah, there we go. We were getting a little bit impatient, but it did take forever, to be honest. <laughs> so it did take a while. Sorry about that. Um, but there we have, so my password, Fred, uh, which is here. Uh, do I dare do another one? Um, maybe now that it's sort of flush, flush the system, it might be a little bit quicker. There we go, so now it's worked a bit quicker. Um, so that's basically the crux of all how this works. Um, one thing you'll notice if you are sort of have a, have a knowledge of web APIs, you didn't have to do any cross-domain cross processes. You did not have to manipulate here in the web API the global ASX. Um, so it's, it's a bit easier to do just a straight, you have to create less code when just using MVC um, to do a web, web API call. If you're going to use a jQuery or Angular language, see my other tutorials, you have to add some magical code here into our global ASAX file. Um, okay, <clears throat> so I hope that was of some use for you, and um, please subscribe to my channel if you'd like, or feel free to visit my website there at gunnawisecamp.com. Thank you.